this is going to be my process. It's not necessarily the right way. This is the way I approach when I paint digitally one of the canines. I have not painted this one yet. I crop it immediately, look at, you know, what do I want to do? How do I want it to look? Um, and then I love the new select subject that Photoshop has. And I will just go in and adjust. You really don't need to if you're digitally painting, but like I said, this is just my process. Sometimes more is better. Didn't pick up that ear, but it did now. Yeah, I need to doesn't always get what I need, but oh come on. Grr. Okay, well, like I said, you're painting it close enough and that gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like. Um I like him looking back this way because he's looking into his past. This one's telling a story to me. Okay, come on. Um, okay. Then I'll just hit Control J, take him out. I still leave him down there, and then decide what I want to do with the background. Um, Sometimes I know right off and sometimes I don't. So since I don't yet, I'm going to fill it with white so I can see what I'm working on. Now, one of the reasons why I chose the K9 is because I know a brush that most of us have that is super easy to use. Um, and I'm in love with it. And it was in Richard Sturdivant's class. And it is Richard's hair. And um, this, this brush is just amazing to me. Now, the only problem with this brush is if where this dog has nothing behind him right now. Let's see something. Yeah. Oh, it does. You need to tell. Okay. You need to tell the brush to make sure sample all layers because if you don't, it doesn't come defaulted that way, and if you don't, and you go to paint the hair, it's going to look, um, it's a different type of brush. And it just, I found it doesn't perform well if you don't have a background in. Um, I'm going to put in a background, some color. There are some awesome brushes that are available. That are under extensions. They're grup brushes. Um, they're flipping amazing and you can make them perform any way you want to. I love their chalks. They have, they do all kinds of neat stuff, but I'm just putting something here so that I have something that I can look at. And you can see, ooh, I do not like that color. I'm on this layer. So now if I go to start painting him in, actually I want to add some of this orangey or darker. And I'm going to have this all mixed up. I know I'm just adding color right now because that's going to all be mixed up. Actually, I'm going to add the lighter right there. Okay, so this can go really fast, actually. I will grab Richard's brush 
and then as you can see um, I'm using the, this is the Wacom Cintiq I I want to get the I don't want this one anymore but because I don't look at my monitor when I draw or look at right here when I draw I look up at my monitor but um, and I want anyway yeah, I'm probably going to upgrade, but I do have the art pen. You don't have to have an art pen. Art pens are good, though. But, so, all I do is I just start painting. And I do little strokes. I don't like the way this is behaving. I'm going to go ahead and um, flatten this. I have found with Richard's brush, if you're doing the edges and you want them to really look like hair, fine little pieces of hair. You have to um, have that flattened to the background. I might send him a message and ask him a little bit about that. But Now, this is a short-haired dog, so you don't have to show so much hair out here. Or you can. It's up to you. And I will work all over. And the depending on the color, I mean the um, area, depends upon the strokes that I use. I love to go in, I'm going to do some of this. I wish you could really see um, my hand. There you go, you can see my hand and the strokes I'm taking and how I work. I didn't prepare this image completely before I I did it because I should have um, gone in and done a tonal control. This is more about just showing the, the paint, how I do it. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to do the whole thing. This is going to give everybody an idea. But if you look at this, you can see it's already taking on. And yes, I do zoom in. And then I'll zoom out to make sure that I still have my painterly quality. Now, I just always make sure when you're painting that you go in the direction of, like you can't see here the direction of the fur. I know what direction is going here. So make sure you keep with the direction of the fur. Um, let me see if I can show you. If you don't, you're going to run into something like that, and it looks like it was a smudge. Um, I have been painting in Photoshop for um, at least 15 years, but <laughs> 15 years ago they didn't have these cool brushes, and I was using <sighs> the smudge tool. I'll show you. This right here is how we used to paint. And we would just move things around. And since they came out with this magic um, clone painting. Now, if I were, this is me painting directly on here. I am being destructive, I guess you could say, but not really because right there is the original. But if you add a layer up here and you start painting, it's going to pull whatever is underneath. You have your sample all layers, and as you can see with this brush, it's just really smearing it. It's not, you're not getting too much detail, but that's on this layer. And if I would take that layer off, you can see it's bringing the picture in. It's actually cloning it and copying it up to the top. And depending on what kind of brush you use, um, you pull one of these grub brushes that I love. They have these cloners in, in the grub brushes, and depending on which one, It's not pulling it. Oh, I have to. Oh, there it goes. I don't know. But it'll pull the colors too. So um, that's what the cloning's all about. But in this case, I am. I had duplicated my layer and I'm painting directly on um, the image. So back to what I was doing. With Richard's brush that I love. 
Now, all this over here is a mess. You can see I'm using Richard's brush and just mixing it up. Trust me, you can use anything, but I um, you could even use these. I love their chalk, these, their, that group, Groot, Grut, whatever kind of brush it is. I love those for mixing stuff. But what? Okay, my son's trying to ask me a question. What? Dad went to get me um, bacon, eight apple smoked bacon to make Carolina barbecue sauce. Okay, back to what I'm doing. So, now when this file was sent to me, it was very small. Um, I did all the canines for a local police department. And um, I have, I use uh, Alien Skin Blow Up if I need to, to resize images. However, I have found now Photoshop's um, as competitive. Okay, so this is going to give you an idea. See how he's coming along. Now, a couple magical things you can do. If you're wanting to add the highlights and make his hair lighter, you know, anything, you can go in, add a color. I'm going to go pull their chalk, the Grut chalk brushes, which are, like I said, awesome. I think it's Puff and Puff, maybe. Yeah. I'll copy a color. I'm on a different la layer. And maybe I want to bring, wrong color, more highlight here. I want to make like a glow to him. And I can just go and say, um, you know, soft, uh, where was it, right there, overlay, and see if it outlines. Um, and you have to play with the blending modes to figure out which one you want to do. And drop it down. Same thing, you could do it along... Um, the snout. Now, when I do the, um, let me see something. Yeah. Once you lay down color, you can grab Richard's great brush again. When I paint the dogs now, ah, when I paint the dogs now, I have found I'm only using one brush, which is Richard's, but I manipulated his brush and I made one and I'm calling it a hairbrush because I have made it to where I can put in color. So it's the same brush. I can choose the color and then I can add the color with the same look. So all I, um, I can send that to anybody that wants it, um, because it was, well, I don't know if I can or not, but anyway, it's easy to do. I can walk you through how to, uh, um, edit your brush and then you really can make it glow. Okay. Um, trying to pick up that lighter color. But that's going to give you an idea um, on that. Now on his eye, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do the whole thing. This is just going to give you an overall. But I will absolutely, if anybody wants to do this for a um, class, I'll do it no problem. i got plenty of time right now. I will grab a chalk brush, the loaf wall. Now... I actually want to show you all. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to, I'm not going to use a brush that I had to pay for. I want to show you a free brush. I go under um, legacy brushes that come with Photoshop. Every, this is, every brush that I have found out there that you can purchase from other people, the heads are in here. I've, it's amazing. Um, okay, I, can, I shouldn't say every, but I have found a large percentage but but then they adjust the brushes totally fair um 
but my dry media brush or under dry under legacy brushes dry media brushes the pastel medium tip fabulous but of course i'm i love those that's where i'm going to go and to do his eye now we can pick up the brown color right there for his eye and do it um i'm going to adjust the opacity and the flow both and just go in his pupil is going to reflect through only at about a minute midway and then you would have a gloss from the light and that's just going to you have to look and determine honestly based on whatever picture you're doing Yeah, that's going to look about right. I might do some hair around his face just to show you. So what I use mainly is the um, mixer brush tool. And I am literally... painting um, the dog's hair with Richard Sturdivant's hairbrush. Now, that, like I showed you, that's not necessarily the only thing I do because I will um, change over to my hairbrush, change colors, add extra um, hair, I love those wisps. I use that when I'm editing people hair. This brush that he gave us was um, a game changer for me. And I have brought this brush into um, Corel. And so I do use this exact same brush the exact same way in Corel Painter. Um, and everything's about the same. So this is giving you an idea. Even on these um, whiskers, what I do is we say goodbye to the whiskers. I still try to keep in mind the direction that I know, right, especially through here on a dog's muzzle. And sometimes I'll grab my dog's muzzle and look at it. <laughs> I have both the short hair. And the long hair and a medium hair, actually. So, one thing I don't like is how gray this turn this turns out, and I lose so much form through there. That wouldn't have happened had I um, gone into Nick and gone into tonal effects ahead of time um, and fix that. But what I can do is fix it with. I can either take chalk and add more, or I can take, come on, my hairbrush. Is that on my hairbrush? I don't, I can't tell. Yeah, okay. I was going to show you the whiskers. Whiskers are the last thing I do, and sometimes I forget and have to go back in. So anyway, I would, if I know where the form is, I'm going to go in and add it so that I get the darkness back in here where I know it is supposed to be on his muzzle okay so this has not been completely done I just heard my husband pull up so I know he's going to come in and think I'm crazy now grab the pastel medium tip Bobby I'm recording and then I'm grabbing this color And I'll show you something. Broken lines are great. If um, this is the chalk that I'm using now, see the color. If you go into the fur, good. If you go into a person's skin, good. Um, you can adjust it. Mm. 
Again, I didn't do it on a layer. I should have, but because then I could have changed the blending mode. But I'm just trying to do this super, super fast because I know that David Lee is just dying to get into this. Okay, so there we go. Now, there is a, I don't know if it's round fan with texture. No, that wasn't it. I'm going to go back to the group brushes. So many brushes. I love them. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Anyway. Okay, I have... Mm, this is totally flat. I would have to fix that, and I would. But I want to show one more thing on the group brushes. paper surfaces. I have no idea what happened to my mouse. Oh, there it is. Um, group came out with these great paper textures. Basically, you take your art that you work, you put it there, move it over, I don't know why. It's too big for this. I'm trying to do this fast. This is what I get for trying to go fast. So they have paper textures so that when you finish your art, it looks fabulous. Um, many people have thought that I've photographed actual artwork uh, based off of the paper textures that I use as a final touch and. So that's one of the um, things that they have. But you can choose. It's not in here. I think. Anyway, they on their paper. Where did it go? They have a. Um, I hate when my stuff doesn't work. I should have had this ready. Oh, anyway, they tell you it, it'll tell you when you get them, um, and you can change the way they the different ones look. So, if I were to, if I would have had him done properly and perfectly, instead of doing this really fast. He could have ended up being a beast. I might end up painting him from start to finish just to show. Okay, so this is the tonal contrast. I'm happy with those set points. Oh, I do like it. There we go. What, buddy? All three of my dogs. Really, Robert? Okay, so you can see the neck would have made him look fabulous if I take it off. It would have, so I should have prepared it. But anyway, so this will at least get you started and see what you can do and how to do it. And um, we'll go ahead and close that one, not save it. But it can show you what your options are. Buddy, stop. And if you wanted to make him, I'll show you something else. If you wanted him to be a long haired shepherd, <laughs> you have that option. Mm 
You can really take his hair out and do bigger wisps. Somebody asked me when I was doing a bunch of the dogs I had got, not the canines, but just other dogs, and I had so many that were sent in all at once that were long hair, and people were asking, do they have to have be long-haired breeds or can they be short hair? And I'm like, they can be any. So um, just for you, the digital artist, to know, it just depends upon whether you use a long stroke like that, if it's a long hair, or a short sh stroke like that, if it's a shorter hair or shorter hair. So anyway, I think I'm going to go back and, and start and do him right because I think he would end up being fabulous. When I save it, I save it um, as a... Uh, of course, I always save my, um, if I have many layers going on, I'll save it as a PSD file. And then after that, I'll save it as a JPEG. And um, I think that's really about it. But if anybody has any questions, just ask me. And yes, I will do an online class for this and work with people individually because um, this is... <coughs> <laughs> this is lots of fun, as you can hear from my dogs. Okay, I'm going to have to end it here and go see what's going on. But anyway, have fun playing. Thanks. I can't get it to cut off. Hold on, people. Look. <laughs>